All right. Good morning. Welcome to Friday Morning Fuel. I'm your host, Coach Mary. Thank you so much for being here. March is National Nutrition Month, and usually we go really hard talking about our macronutrients, our micronutrients, how to optimize performance, gains, goals, all of those great things. But we're going to take a different look now and talk more about how we can use nutrition, food, and supplements to help recovery from an injury or an illness. Since nutrition has lots of things to offer from food, and I'm just gonna show you some of the ways that you can enhance your recovery time. So when we talk about injury and illness, we need to talk about inflammation. I could go on and on about inflammation for probably a solid 30 minutes, but for the context of today, we're just gonna do a very brief overview of inflammation and the inflammation process. So. There are two types of inflammation. There is acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation is a short-term process that occurs in response to tissue damage, foreign substances, or infection. Chronic inflammation occurs in response to the accumulation of unresolved acute inflammation. This type of inflammation is the underlying cause of many diseases, including autoimmune disorders, and can include symptoms like chronic fatigue, brain fog, skin conditions, mood disorder, IBS, and so many more. That's why it's important to fully resolve your acute inflammation before it turns chronic and brings added health challenges. So give your body what it needs to fully recover by focusing on these four things. First one, omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s help control inflammation and it can help resolve acute inflammation so that it doesn't become chronic. That's what we want. The problem is that omega-3 is an essential fatty acid, which means that our bodies cannot manufacture that nutrient. It has to come from food. So you can stock up on omega-3 sources from things like fatty fish, oysters, seaweed, algae, black seeds, chia seeds, and walnuts. So fatty fish, all different kinds, and then good nuts and seeds are a great way to get some omega-3s into your diet. And after we run through our four components today, I'm going to use a couple of different recipes to show you what a full day of eating could look like to prioritize recovery with your nutrition. Our second component today is going to be gut health. Gut health is really having a moment right now. We're learning more and more about it every day, and I'm sure in five to 10 years, we'll still have barely scratched the surface. The human body is so amazing. But what we do know currently is that the gut microbiome, so all the bacteria that thrive along your digestive tract, are very closely linked to your immune system. So having a healthy gut and digestive tract can really help enhance recovery time and bouncing back from an illness. Your gut is where your body absorbs nutrients. And if you can't absorb the nutrients you need to heal, your illness or your injury can just be prolonged, which we don't want that. Nobody wants to be down for the count for so long. Keep your gut happy with plenty of prebiotics from foods like asparagus, bananas, and onions, and probiotics from sources like yogurt, kimchi, and sauerkraut. We did an episode on Friday Morning Fuel a couple of months ago about the difference between prebiotics and probiotics. Typically, prebiotics are going to be foods that have a good amount of fiber in them, either soluble or insoluble. And probiotics are generally foods that we call fermented. So they have been processed with live active bacteria cultures that generally enhance the already existing gut microbiome. And if you want to see that, you can check that out on our YouTube channel if you would like to know a little bit more about prebiotics and probiotics. Category number three, anti-inflammatory foods. Now that sounds like a huge umbrella statement because I feel there are so many things that can go into that category of anti-inflammatory foods. Foods that are high in antioxidants support the inflammatory process, the healing process. These include things like cherries, dark chocolate, avocados, beets, dark leafy green vegetables like spinach and kale, berries, red cabbage, beans, dried herbs, and spices. I hope you've noticed a general trend about the things that we listed. 
very rich, very deep, very bright colors. So we have a saying, eat the rainbow. Eating the rainbow is a great way to make sure that you get a whole array of micronutrients that your body needs. But especially when it comes to antioxidants, the more colorful the food, generally the more antioxidants going to have for you. And we're going to show some of those today during our recipes coming up. And lastly, we'll give a shout out to supplements. So I know supplements can be kind of a buzzword for people and you may have your own opinions about it. However, it goes to say that sometimes you can't get everything you need from food alone, even when you have a strong diet. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that. Supplements when used in collaboration with your nutrition plan can help you achieve your goals and can help you bounce back from recovery. Some supplements to consider, especially during a time of healing, are omega-3s from fish or krill. They have those essential fatty acids, again, that our bodies cannot manufacture, so we need to consume them from food. Glutamine, pre and probiotics, tart cherry juice, SPMs, which stands for Specialized Pro-Resolving Mediators, which is why it has a nice abbreviation. And SPMs are generally going to be a blend of several essential fatty acids, including those omega-3s, EPAs, and DHAs. They do kind of have a fishy taste to them. And I have heard that the ones that are made from krill sources generally have less of a fishy taste. So something to keep in mind. Also, zinc and CBD, CBD oil. So all of those supplements, not that you need to take all of them. Your mileage may vary and probably something you could discuss with a doctor if you are feeling a little under the weather to see if how any of those might be able to support you. All right. So just to recap, and this is not an exhaustive list. These are just some highlights for you that there are two types of inflammation. We have acute inflammation chronic inflammation. Acute being what builds up short term. Generally, when you have um, like an illness, you get a cough, you get a cold, maybe you get um, allergies, but letting it go unresolved for a long period of time can lead into chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation puts a lot more stress on your system for a longer period of time. So the priority is to resolve acute inflammation first, and if you are dealing with some chronic inflammation, just looking at food, but also other things like sleep, exercise, movement, stress management, all of those things can play heavily into how well your system is handling inflammation. So on the heels of that, I want to show you guys a couple of recipes of potentially what a full day of eating could look like when I'm trying to optimize nutrition. And there's two things I would like to call out that was not listed in the notes that I just provided, but two uh, different sources to help with that recovery process is going to be collagen. Well, I guess collagen is just the one, but collagen. So collagen is a type of protein that your body utilizes. Collagen specifically helps to support what we call connective tissues. Connective tissues are things like your skin, but also includes things like your tendons and your ligaments that help support your bones and your joints. So if you are dealing with a little bit of joint pain or inflammation, or maybe you're recovering from like a muscle injury, hamstring pull, a sprained ankle, collagen might be a great source for you to utilize as well during this recovery time. And I'm going to show you guys now, I have two sources of collagen with me today that I have been using for my recovery. So the first one is just a simple collagen peptides powder. It's an unflavored powder, so it blends in very nicely with any kind of like smoothies, yogurt, and I'm going to show you guys that today. Another way you can also get collagen in is through bone broth. So Bone broth is generally made from the bones of animals. You can add in vegetables and spices as well to enhance the flavor. It simmers for a very long time to draw out the marrow from the bones. That's where that collagen rich source is located. And today I have just a very nice, lovely chicken bone broth. 
Bone broth can also be a good source of protein. This one cup of protein, I think two, two cups rather than one is what the serving size says. So that two cups of bone broth there is almost 20 grams of protein. So if you're looking for a way that's not necessarily consuming meat or consuming a protein powder, maybe look into bone broth. Also goes a long way for gut health. All right, so let's begin with breakfast. First meal of the day, I am so hungry, have not even eaten anything yet, because I've been holding off to show you guys what we're gonna make for breakfast. So to prioritize breakfast, we're gonna be utilizing our prebiotics, our probiotics, our antioxidants, and I'm gonna prioritize some collagen as well, and maybe some essential fatty acids. So a lot of boxes are gonna get checked, checked off with these recipes. So for breakfast today, we're going to make a banana split yogurt bowl. So we'll need a couple of things. First one you're going to need is some yogurt. Pretty much any yogurt, whether it's dairy yogurt or a plant-based derivative, is essentially made with those live active cultures. So no, it does not matter if you're using Greek yogurt, if you're using regular yogurt, if you're using um, like kefir or I have coconut yogurt today still made with those live active cultures, those probiotics, which are gonna be great for our gut. All right, so for our banana split yogurt bowl, we're gonna begin with one cup of yogurt. And I recommend putting this in if you have a dish that is a bit, mm, that's yummy. If you have a dish that's a little bit longer, more rectangular shape than square shaped, depending on the size of your banana, and again, that's just purely aesthetic. If you just have any bowl, completely fine. All right, so I'm gonna take it in here with one cup of yogurt. I'm gonna spread that along the bottom here. And if I wanted to add a little bit of collagen in here, I could. I don't think I'm gonna do so, A, because I have my, my bone broth, and B, I don't really wanna mix it into this yogurt, but I am gonna use it for a different recipe here in a moment. All right, so one cup of yogurt. We're gonna spread that yogurt kind of out along the bottom of the glass here. All right, so a banana split. When was the last time you had a banana split? So we need our banana. We're gonna take that banana, we're gonna split it right down the middle here. Gonna split it in half. A traditional banana split, because I used to work in our ice cream parlor when I was in college, a traditional banana split is one banana split lengthwise, and then it's made with three scoops of ice cream. Traditionally, it is chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. And then each of those scoops of ice cream is usually topped with a different kind of topping. At our place, we did chocolate sauce strawberry sundae topping and crushed pineapple topping. I know people have strong feelings about pineapple and where it belongs or doesn't belong, but I'm just letting you know, that's just how traditional banana splits are. That's not how I'm gonna do banana split today. So I've got my banana cut in half lengthwise set here along the bottom of my bowl. Today I'm gonna be using berries, not ice cream, sadly. But I'm going to be using a variety of berries. I've got blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries. So again, those very just like vibrant, rich colors. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of each along the way. So things that I could add to this bowl to increase some essential fatty acids. Easily could throw in some like walnuts, some chia seeds, some flax seeds as well to give it a nice crunch texture as well. All right, and then before I eat this, I'm gonna add a drizzle of honey just for a little bit of extra sweetness, but ta-da! All right, breakfast, day one of recovery, banana split yogurt bowl. Super easy, just came together in a couple of minutes, and honestly, it just took so long because I chatted about it the whole time. All right, so I'm gonna eat that post-show, let you guys know how it goes. Let's go ahead and prep two more things for today. So I'm gonna prep my dinner for this evening. And for dinner, I'm going in with some fatty fish. So I've got a nice salmon filet here. We'll be doing our salmon filet in a foil packet. 
foil packets are a great way to a cook a lot of things together so you can do vegetables and protein in one package it's super easy to clean up it all cooks together and it just has like really nice flavor as everything cooks in the same pouch since i am making this for dinner tonight we'll take our aluminum foil packet i'm just gonna bag it up prep it in the fridge and then when i'm ready to consume we'll be going in later so let me grab some aluminum foil we'll be doing herbs and spices for our salmon today salmon is so wonderful there are also other sources of fatty fish like mackerel and some forms of tuna um, but salmon is not the only option out there for fatty fish and you can also look towards canned sources as well if you're looking for something that's a bit smaller maybe it's a one person meal or you're setting it up as a snack all right so i've got my foil here i'm just going to fold up the edges a little bit like i'm making a little container like a to-go box to pack everything in i'm going to dress my salmon with some dill weed some rosemary some salt and some pepper we're going to slice up some lemons layer that on top and then it's all good to go for tonight all right beautiful salmon filet here okay i'm gonna wash my hands here right after we move this into our pockets if you're not a huge fan of fish remember that nuts and seeds are also great sources of fatty acids and you can also again include those supplements like fish oils krill oils and spms those pro resolving mediators all right bear with me one second gotta get that raw fish smell and any potential lingering bacteria off the hands okay i like to bake salmon let me know in the comments how you like to eat salmon or if you do fish in your household what are some really great ways that you like to serve fish i recently had shrimp forgot how much i really love 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 shrimp okay so got my salmon i love dill so i'm gonna tailor this to my liking so we're gonna go very heavy-handed with some dill Go in with some rosemary. Could probably go in with some garlic or garlic powder. Again, prioritizing those prebiotics. Mmm, that smells so good. Oh, it smells so wonderful. All right, we got our dill. We got our rosemary. And alongside this, which I won't show today in this course, I'm also going to do some carbohydrates to balance out my meal. So I'll be doing some roasted sweet potatoes. I will probably also do those in a foil packet so that way I can cook both things kind of side by side. And then I also plan to saute some spinach in the cast iron. So with a little bit of spinach and probably some ghee or some butter, some chopped garlic, again, to really get in those dark leafy greens, those antioxidant rich foods. All right, let's add our lemon slice. And then I'm going to show you our last recipe. I decided to go a little bit more creative. I realized I could make like another entree, but sometimes when you're feeling down or you're feeling sick, you really want some comfort food. And sometimes comfort food is sweet things. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a ice cream for when you're feeling a little under the weather. And we're going to use um, cherries, tart cherry juice, and collagen powder in our base recipe here. Okay, so ugly sliced my lemon this time. I'm going to lay those slices right here on top. Wrap this up. Like I said, I'm not cooking this right now, so I'm going to put this in a Ziploc bag so that it doesn't dry out and just keeps it all nice and contained for when I'm ready. But yeah. Ta-da, foil pocket here. All right, so we made our breakfast, we prepped our lunch. Now let's make some fun dessert. So recently for Christmas, I got a Ninja Creamy, which all that means is it's a uh, high-powered mixing machine. 
it's not quite a kitchen aid it's not quite a food processor and it's not quite a blender so i'm not quite sure how to describe it but the way it works is essentially i make whatever my base is in a regular blender i put it in this little cup this cup goes in the freezer and then when i'm ready to use it that's when i hook it up to the creamy and the creamy uses a blade that pushes all the way down to the bottom to really mix up the consistency so super fun really have been enjoying it so let's make some ice cream shall we all right so for my regular blender i just use a ninja blender but any blender cup is fine we're gonna go with one and a half cups of fruit of choice today we're gonna do cherries so i'm gonna grab some frozen cherries and you can use raw cherry sorry not raw cherries fresh cherries that's the word i'm looking for you can use fresh cherries instead of frozen ones i just feel like the frozen ones are just like super sweet and just have a really nice consistency afterwards here all right so one cup you could also measure this out on a scale a food scale as well and honestly a lot of times i just eyeball it i just pour it in and measure to my heart's content all right so one cup and we're going to fill this up just about halfway here there we go all right so We've got one and a half cups of fruit. I'm gonna add in our liquids, which is gonna be a mix of some tart cherry juice. Tart cherry juice is great for sleep. And so the great nighttime snack to help us wind down for the day. And I'm also gonna be using coconut cream. So you can use any kind of fat source here. Honestly, you could do avocados, you could do cream cheese. But we want something with a little bit of a higher fat content so that way when it blends it has just a really creamy texture but if maybe you're looking to not quite go so heavy on those calories especially from fat you could also use any other kind of like low calorie option and then maybe add in a stabilizer so with our coconut cream i'm going to add in two-thirds of a cup of coconut cream and we're going to add in one third a cup of our tart cherry juice now my blender is super loud, so I'm not going to mix it on screen for you guys. All right, we got one third. Here we go. All right, mixing up. Here we go. You could also add some flavor enhancers like vanilla extract, or you could even add in cocoa powder. Cocoa powder also is a very rich source of antioxidants and Two tablespoons of cocoa powder has about three grams of fiber. So fun little trick there to get a little bit of extra fiber. All right, so we've got two thirds cup coconut cream. Fantastic. We're gonna add in our one third cup of tart cherry juice. Mm hmm One third cup tart cherry juice. And then, again, to enhance that recovery process, I'm gonna add in some collagen protein. On the label, it says that a serving size is approximately 20 grams or four tablespoons. And that contains about 20 grams of protein. Hopefully you guys don't think I'm crazy, but I'm actually gonna beef this up a little bit and we're gonna double that. So, Doubling that brings it up to one half cup of collagen protein powder, collagen protein peptides, I should say. Perfect. All right. So like I said, I'm not going to blend this on camera, but I'm essentially going to blend that up. It's going to go into this special cup. I'm going to pop it into the freezer and then generally, hopefully by tonight or maybe tomorrow, it will be frozen solid enough that I can mix it back up. And if I wanted to eat the whole pint, that's a solid 40 grams of protein. So great high protein option there if you're looking for one. All right, friends, that's going to wrap it up for today. So we did a breakfast option. We did an entree. We even did a dessert option to help us with optimizing our recovery and healing process. Thank you guys so much for hopping on. Next month, we're going to be taking a look at gourmet instant noodles so it's ways that you can spice up your ramen and make it a little bit more uh flavorful bright but still keeping the cost low thank you guys so much for hopping on have a great weekend and we'll see you next month on friday morning fuel thank you